What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. After Sound here, bringing you Splinter Lens content every single day. We also stream right here on this channel every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday morning. So come by and say hello. All right, guys, we have it. The next promo card and the first dual element card in Splinterlands history. This is a monster card, not a summoner like I think many of us were uh, anticipating, but uh, nonetheless, still very exciting. Now, this is going to be a legendary life slash death monster. And uh, I say we jump down to the stats first because I think that's what people want to know first and foremost, and then we can get into the sale details. So here we go. Uh, we'll pull this up, and you can see at max level... Zerial is an absolute beast in my opinion. Now, is this card going to be required, meta breaking, meta changing? It's it's hard to tell. Uh, I'm I'm still trying to go through and figure out like what cards it's going to, um, well, you know what what cards it's really going to synergize well. And I might save that for a separate video here, just because I want to focus in on the kind of economics behind it of uh, within the rest of the post, which I I find to be even better overall <laughs> than the card itself. But that's just me. So you can see here, awesome card art in my opinion. You get to straddle that whole you know life and death on each side. You get both of the uh, the little elements here, which is which is fantastic, but this is not a cheap card. It is a seven mana card, although it packs quite a big punch. Now, at the lowest level, so if you get just one BCX of this, you get the weapons training, which is interesting because you can pair it with the other weapons training monsters for both life and death, which are also, uh, which are magic. Uh, so, you can essentially give, like if you, if you sandwich a non-attack monster in between Zerial and one of the other uh, weapons training monsters, you'll be able to give it an additional, you know, additional attack. So it'll have a range attack as well as a magic attack. Uh, so that, that stacking of abilities could be pretty cool. And you do get the life leech at level one. So with, you know, a, a damage of three, I believe you'd be getting two life per turn. Now, it starts off with only four health, right? So three attack, two speed, speed never changes, uh, and four health. When you get to silver, though, so three BCX, you get that fourth damage. Um, uh, health stays the same, but you also get divine shield, which gives it another turn. Um, but where it shines, in my opinion, is really at the, uh, at the higher levels, right? So starting in gold, you get rust, which is just so crucial for so much of the meta now because you think about well there's you know astral entity already exists for death summoners so you could actually even go really heavy against armor and play you know astral entity plus her and do minus four armor if you think you're going to be up against some heavy armor or maybe the rule set calls for for armor um but ultimately like there's there's so much armor in the game you think about kelia lux vega uh, what's his name? Uh, Grandmaster Wraith, right? Like there's, it's been, it's been a big deal, which is why I think, uh, Astral Entity had the minus two armor to begin with, but having this now as something that's available in two different splinters, right? Um, in two different splinters is really clutch in, in my opinion. And then obviously when you get to the highest level, uh, or maxed out, uh, you will get, uh, the fifth attack, which means every time you hit, you are gaining three life, assuming you actually uh, hit for something, right? So ultimately, you know, I find this card to be really interesting. I'm surprised that it doesn't have flying. I mean, considering it seems like, she, well, I guess she's fallen, right? Uh, according to the, uh, <laughs> according to the uh, the lore here. But we're gonna skip the lore for now. This is going to go live uh, a week from tomorrow. So on May second, three p.m. Oh, I guess three p.m. my time. Sorry, four p.m. Eastern time. Uh, 2000, is that what it is? <laughs> Basically, 8 o'clock, 8 p.m. UTC, and the sale will run for 30 days or until the cards sell out. There will be a total of 15,000 single BCX serial, which means we're going to have a little bit more between 13 and 1400 potential max copies of this card, which is actually more than previous promos, if you think about it. It's more than Waka, it's more than uh, Lux Vega. But I do love the fact that there is a uh, a single BCX option for people who are playing in the lower leagues, right? If you're in bronze or if you're in silver, you don't need to have a max copy. Why would you go out and pay for a max copy when all you need is three BCX? So to me, that that has a lot, you know, it, I love how they listen to the players because we've all been complaining about this for a while, just making it more accessible. And, and here you go, right? It happened with Salty Bear last, uh, last quarter, and now we're getting it here with a legendary promo card. Um... 
moving on to the price. So the base price for this is going to be 80,000 DEC, or if DEC is at peg, about $80 in DEC or credits. Uh, and players may receive up to a 50% discount on the purchase price by spending voucher tokens at a rate of 25 cents per token. Uh, so this is actually a huge change from the previous, uh, previous promo card, which was uh, not Salty Bear because I was with Chaos Packs, but um, what's her name? Lux Vega. Vouchers were valued at a dollar there, whereas now they're being kind of pegged to 25 cents, which means you have to spend more of them. And, uh, you know, quick math on this, uh, and Aggie even mentioned this in the town hall, is if vouchers are used, if this sells out and vouchers are used for all of it, which they definitely should be because vouchers are trading for less than 25 cents right now, um, that's going to eat up 2.4 million vouchers from the ecosystem. And I forgot where the numbers were at in the last video that I did, but I kind of want to rerun them now. Uh, I, may, I may wait until after this happens to see if we actually sell out. Um, but getting a rough idea of where the voucher supply is at... We, we didn't have that much, right? Um, it's so this, this could eat through a significant amount of vouchers uh, for a card that I think is going to be desired by many people. Again, I don't think it's going to be needed. I, I'm not, I, I'll tell you right now, I'm not planning on getting one, at least not initially. Uh, but ultimately, you know, may, maybe on the secondary market or maybe I'll grab a couple of BCX, who knows. But the point is that like people I think are going to love the card. It's going to, it's going to be a status symbol because it's the first dual element card and people are just going to want to have it. So I, I fully expect it to sell out. Although, you know, may, may, maybe the hype has died down and there has been a lot of, a lot of negative feedback to it. But again, from a pricing and economy standpoint, I love the fact that it's going to burn through four times the amount of vouchers than, uh, than what Lux Vega did, right? Es essentially like four times the amount of vouchers, actually five times because Lux Vega only burned 500,000 vouchers. This is going to burn 2.4 million, which is crazy. So uh, you also have a chance of it being a gold foil. But the cool part about this is that you can get guaranteed gold foils if you purchase 25 in a single transaction. Now, who the hell needs 25 in a single transaction? <laughs> I, I mean, at that point, you have more than two max versions. So this is this is really just a gift to the whales, which is fine because, you know, you got, you got to give the whales some food. So for those who want to purchase that much and have multiple copies of this and, you know, get a, a gold foil copy, it's it's going to make sense. And I think that they're, you know, they're, they're probably going to end up going for it. And we'll probably see a lot of gold foil versions out there from people that want to collect them because you only need four, right? So if you buy a hundred BCX, you're guaranteed four, at least four of them to be gold foil, right? But um, let's see, there'll be no limit to the amount of zero cards that each account can purchase, but there will be a maximum of 25 cards that can be purchased per transaction. So they, they're trying to make it uh, actually advantageous for you because if you were to buy 50 at a time, that would actually hurt your chances. Whereas if you just buy 25 at a time, you're guaranteed to get at least one gold foil in that role. Um, so let's see, first and foremost, Zerial is the first multi-element uh, uh, card being introduced as a life-death card can be used with both life and death or dragon neutral summoners when either life or death is chosen. Uh, while there are already neutral cards in the game, which can be used with any summoner, they typically have lower power levels to compensate for their increased utility. Zerial, on the other hand, will have a power level that is in line with element-specific cards. Additionally, Zerial will give the bonus RP when used for both life and death focuses, and I'm assuming as well for promo cards. Uh, on top of it being the first multi-element card, Zerial is also the first tradable card in the game to have the new weapons training ability. So you can't buy any cards with weapons training ability right now. And I know because my RNG sucks for the soulbound reward cards. Um, so it's, it's, it sucks because like I, I want to start using the weapons training more. I know it's a big part of the meta, but all of my, all, all of my legendary monsters, I think are still level one. I don't have anything leveled up. Um, and so she can be combined with other soulbound weapons trainers like Ava Sturgis and Skok Duskblight. These are the two I mentioned earlier to give multiple attacks to no cards, turning these normally passive creatures into potent, potent damage dealers. So I, I'm immediately, thinking of like Pelicor Conjurer, there's Elvin Aura. Oh, we'll do we'll do a separate video looking looking at those because uh, I think it'll be fun to break down the, the meta changes that will happen. Um, and seven mana will fit into many teams. Finally, please note on land, multi-element cards will be considered as whichever element gives them the highest terrain bonus. For example, Zero will receive a 10% bonus on Badlands, Bogs, Forest, Hills, whatever, blah, 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 all that good stuff. Uh, so get your supplies while they last. Um, and then we got some lore here, which is cool. So ultimately, you know, I'm I'm curious to know what your thoughts on this card are. I know in the town hall, there were a lot of people who were giving, you know, a little negative feedback saying that it's, it's way too expensive of a card. When you think about it, right, 
every BCX is about $40. And actually, DEC is less, it is, is about 15% below its peg right now, 17% below its peg. So it's not actually $40 per BCX. Um, it's actually lower than that. But of course, you have to add the vouchers in. Uh, and so it's it's 160 vouchers. So let's, let's do the math on this. 160 vouchers times 0.11. One, I think is where we're at. So 17 bucks. Uh, okay, so it is a $56 card. So when you're comparing that to some of the other cards, and actually, you know what? Screw it. Let's just go over to the let's just go over to the marketplace right now. If we look at a lot of the other promo cards here, 56 bucks when it's first coming out is not really as comparable to something like Dr. Blight, no sure. But here's the thing: for most people, uh people get vouchers for free. So it's it's, it's a tough thing because it's like you get vouchers for free for being an SPS staker or for holding stuff in game. But if you don't already have things that give you vouchers, then of course you need to buy it from those people. So I wonder if in a way they're looking at the price of the card as being significantly less, right? Or significantly less than what it's being priced at now, just because vouchers are given out the way that they are. Um, but ultimately, you know, I, I find it to be relatively in line. It has an interesting utility to it. I'm not too crazy about, I like, I I'm not, I'm not upset about the price. I think it makes sense. And I guess maybe a part of that is because I don't feel the need to necessarily get one or get one right away. But, um, you know, for people who are trying to be competitive, I think it's a card that can be very useful in the future, or at least as a flex for, for many things. So, I'm curious to know, what are your thoughts? Are you planning to get one? How do you feel about the price? How do you feel about the stats? Um, but that is all I really have for you guys in this video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I'll catch you all in the next one and see you around the game. Take care.